Hello everybody. Okay then, uh, I'm doing an update of my, where I'm up to with my loco. Uh, this is my beginner's loco. Um, obviously that's for beginners, which I am a beginner. Uh, and I thought I'd just document everything so that any other beginners out there can uh, see what I'm doing and it might help. Right, so I've just... I've just spent all a lot some at morning cleaning all these parts up. Uh, I've cleaned all my frames up and all my stretches and all my own guides, my suspension brackets, my keeper plates. Everything's numbered up, and everything's uh, everything's been cleaned up now. And then I've just uh, I've just had an hour at putting putting my flat frames together. Just to give me an idea of where I'm up to and and uh, what might need doing to them. Right, so you'll have seen by now I've got my frame set on this piece of wood. Ideally, they they, they ought to be set on a on a, a metal bed, something like a milling machine table. But if you've not got a milling machine, or if you're like me, you just got a hobby machine. My table is nowhere near long enough for this. They're 30 inch long, these. I think my table's only about 20 inch. So, I know it's not ideal, and I know the professionals out there uh, might have something to say about this, but what I've done, I've, 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 I've got this piece of wood and I've had it planed up so it's, so it's perfectly flat. Well, as perfectly as you can get wood flat, anyway. And it is it is quite flat actually. I've had my straight edge on and I, and my feeler gauges, and there's there's not much there's not much um, there's not no gaps anywhere. Uh, so I've had my frames clamped up, and I've just been trying them to see you know if 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 everything's lining up and if there's if the if everything's straight, uh, just to make sure everything's going to fit where it should fit. So I spent an hour doing that, and also yesterday I've cut my buffer beams to size. I've milled my slot in for me with my coupling fits on both of them, and this is the rear one. Now. In the drawer, and it tells you just to put a, an angle on these or a radius. I've I've gone I've gone all the way just to be different. I've put I've put a cut out in them. So my front one here, I've managed to get me uh, me angles fitted. Uh, eyesight's a wonderful thing, and I wish. I'll just zoom in. I'll just zoom in so you can see this better. When I drilled all my holes in my frames, in my side frames, in the book it, it tells you to drill the end hole, both end holes for the with the angle fits on the buffer plates. And to be honest, I wish I hadn't have done that now because it's causing a, a few more problems problems that can be solved it's just it's just making it more complicated uh, to do right the reason for that is if i rivet these angles on now when i put them onto my frames i can't find them holes because he, there's, there's an angle each side and it's covering the holes so if I hadn't to drill the holes I could have drilled my holes in my angle and then transferred them into my frame and done it that way well I've not done that I've done it I've done what the book said and I've drilled them into into the side frames so what I'm what I'm doing I'm putting one eighth rivets in these when I when I finish them off so there's got one eighth holes in. Uh, I've put five BA screws in, which are 
0.126 on OD, so the same size as rivets. And I fastened them up with nuts on the back. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to get everything lined up. When I've done my back one, get everything lined up. I'm going to clamp everything up. And I'm going to take one angle off at a time so I can transfer from the holes that I've already drilled into the other angle. Then I can take the other angle off and drill it. And then I can put this angle back on and then transfer into this angle from the other side. And that's the way I'm going to do it now. Now when I get this riveted on, when I get these riveted on, obviously then you've got to fasten them onto the frame and I don't fancy having to rivet down this back here. It tells you that's it tells you to rivet them on it but but looks a bit as though it's going to be a bit difficult to do that. So what I've got, I've got these button head screws which I've bought. These I tensile black I tensile button head screws. I'm just going to zoom it out a fraction. I'm not focusing. I don't think these button head screws. So they will look like rivets once they're in. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put clearance clearance holes in this side. In the in the first angle and in the frame. Then I'm going to tap the other side to, to these screws, which are M4. And I'm going to put M4 screws in. So I'm going to do it that way. I'm, I'm, I've gone off that riveting idea because it's going to be too difficult, I think, inside that frame. I know you can take one side off and do one side, but you've still, at some point, you've got to get them both together and rivet the other side on. So another reason I'm going to use these screws is this. When I put my stretches in, I've got my stretches made now, look. I've riveted the angles onto all my stretches, so they're, re they're ready for fitting. And if you saw in one of my previous videos, I've made these and they're within a thousandth of an inch and they're all the same to keep my width to keep me overall width the same. So when they slide in, in position, and I've got everything clamped up and lined up, I'm going to transfer my holes from this side into my stretchers. Then I'm going to drill, drill and tap my stretchers, M4, for these screws. Then I'm going to put clearance drill in for M4. And I'm going to use a 530 second drill which is 0.156 on, o, on diameter and these screws are 0.153 I believe on OD so I've got about three, 2 to 3 thou or 3 to 4 thou clearance in all my holes so that when I've got all my stretches in and all my screws fixed I've got a little bit of give here and there to get me lined up then I can dog these screws up and lock tight them in once I've got everything lined up and then another thing is because I've not got a milling machine where I can fit my own guides and then put my frames back in my milling machine and take a skim across the faces to make sure they're parallel well in the book it tells you you can use a straight edge and a, and a square because it's a beginner's loco and in the book it says you can make this loco without a milling machine, just a milling attachment in your lathe. So obviously when you've got your horn guides fitted you can't put them back in, in a milling machine to skim them up. So by using these screws that look like rivets to fasten everything together it's going to give me a, lit, a couple of thou play here and there to get everything lined up, especially when I come to fitting my own, own guides in and get them lined up. So all my slots are machined up and I machined them with the frames clamped together and they're all machined up within a thousandth of an inch on the width 
and all the dimensions so are these own guides so when I've got my frame squared up and, and fastened up when I fit my own guides in theory everything should be within within a couple of thou at least and by using them screws I, I've got that little bit of give to get me to get everything lined up then once once everything's lined up I'm going to lock tight all the screws in and, and, and uh, they'll be fixed in for good then okay so where am I up to I've got me here's a little not a tip it's just something I forgot to do when I put my brackets on first off my angle brackets on me on my buffer beam I, I forgot to leave a a gap at the top here for the thickness of the foot 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 plate that fits on top so I've I've had to put them back in my milling machine and just mill mill a bit off thickness of foot foot plate so when that's on you want your foot plate to be level with the top of your buffer beam like that So uh, don't go and forget to do that when you come to do it like I did. Right, so that's my front, my front buffer beam uh, on its way to be completed. I've got my back one now to sort out. So I'm going to get them angles fitted to this one, same as I've done the, the front one. And then I've got these angles to fit. At back at frame like I've done in front there's one each side like that so just another just another little reminder when you when you've cut your angle if you're cutting them from uh, hot roll angle no doubt no doubt they'll not be square so you'll have to skim them up so you can either do them on your milling machine or put your uh, milling attachment in your lathe or if you're good with a file you can square them up that way but they must be square on that profile so that everything fits up nicely to frame up buffer beam like that and again you've got to leave it the, the amount of thickness that your foot plate is going to be so that your buffer beam stood proud of that. I won't forget that this time. Uh, right. I think that's it. I've got all, I've got everything made now. Everything's ready for assembly. So uh, I'll do another clip as I progress a bit further.